Welcome to today's video. I'm just another Chris, and today I want to talk about this guy right here. This is a glass telephoto lens for your vintage folding cameras, such as your SX70s, SLR 680s, etc. So let's send you into the field. Uh, while I was down in San Diego filming for my documentary, shot a little something something for you. But before we do that, let's roll that intro. Let's do it. You know the type of guy that was a jock in high school but ended up becoming a huge nerd? You know, someone that's not afraid to make a fool of themselves on the internet. And someone that likes to shoot Polaroid a little too much? Did I say huge nerd? You know, just an ordinary, everyday guy. Well, that's me. I'm just another Chris. So I'm using the SLR 680 for this demonstration. And I'm gonna use Jordan. I guess he's gonna be a backpack model. That's cool. Back to school photo. He's got a, I mean, show the, show the fine people here. But he's going back to school. Uh, and so, yeah. What I've learned with this lens is you can't use autofocus, um, which is okay, I guess, but it's not a big deal. Uh, it has a notch for manual focus. However, this camera that I'm using is a little uh, janky. Uh, so I have to like squeeze this part and then use this finger to take the picture and then my middle finger to focus because it's kind of broken. <laughs> but we shall persevere. Jordan, you ready for this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there you go. You're getting that, that face there. All right, ready? Three, two, one. It didn't work. Hang on, hold up. Like I said, it's kind of janky. Two, one. First shot, done. And now what I think we're gonna do is might as well have Phil be the next model. I'll take three. How are you feeling today, Phil? <laughs> Pretty good. <laughs> this was torn. I mean, I'm wearing, I'm wearing this flannel. I know, I'm wearing like a short sleeve flannel and it's getting pretty warm. <laughs> All right. Summer started early. It did. Right do. All right, you ready to get your pose? Hold still. Okay. Okay. Every time. <laughs> Every time I say hold still, he moves. Okay, three, two, one. Three, two, one. Oh, what the hell? Okay, for real this time. Three. Frick. Okay, for real this time. Three, two, one. Nailed it. Nailed it. As I'm trying to get this in my pocket. <laughs> it won't go in my pocket. This will work on any other folding camera. Uh, it doesn't have to be this one. It'll work on SX70 with the sonar and uh, SLR680, as you can see. Just remember, if you do find one of these, because they are pretty rare, you can't use autofocus. It doesn't really uh, translate. So you have to switch into manual. Hopefully yours isn't janky like mine. Uh, it's just, back off. It's just janky. All right, we're, we're gonna see if Phil can master it. How's the shadow on my face look? Is it good? Yeah, you're in the sun. You might lift your hat up a little bit. Wait, switch it up? You're freezing into the sun. Get that alabaster shine. Look at your alabaster skin all twinkling in the sunlight. <laughs> it told you it's gonna take it. The thing about when I shoot my photos, you know, is I'm never in them. <laughs> so it's cool to have you know a picture of me every now and then. You know? So as I was mentioning, this is kind of rare inexpensive it is pretty expensive i bought this a few months ago now and i have to double check how much i paid for this but i think it was around 125 dollars which was a fairly good deal because there was only two available at the time of me purchasing it and the other one was like 180 dollars it's pretty expensive uh, for a polaroid accessory and if i can find some that are currently still available i'll leave some links in the description for you if you want to try and track one down for yourself but if you have one of these and want to learn more about it uh, or just want to learn about it in general, here we go, let's dive into it. So it's a glass lens, telephoto, 1.5 times zoom on this thing. What's it for? Well, it has two purposes really. One purpose is, as uh, you would normally think, a telephoto lens, you can get things a lot closer. So if you're shooting something in like a tree, like birds, or things are just a little bit farther away, you can get a little bit extra zoom out of your camera. It's really neat. But another really great feature of this, which is kind of why I picked it up, was to be able to do portrait photos. And when I was shooting the photos uh, in San Diego, I 
made a bonehead mistake. Can't believe I didn't think of this. Uh, that wasn't an optimal situation to demonstrate this lens. It just didn't make sense. We were outside on a super bright sunny day and the cameras are all automatic. So it's going to adjust for the light and uh, not give you the full effect of what this can do. And what I'm talking about is background blur. Yeah, it can give you a little bit of bokeh effect. It will uh, compress the background and blur it more than it would normally. Uh, so the real use of this is going to be indoors, like inside a studio setting. That is where you're going to get the most effect out of it. So as you can see from the photos, Phil, Jordan, and then of myself, uh, look at the background. It's a little bit more blurry than you typically would maybe see out of a Polaroid camera. However, uh, it's not that noticeable at all. Uh, and so I can't, I, hmm, yeah, I made a mistake. Shouldn't have done that. <laughs> So what I have done is done some shots inside the studio here to really demonstrate what this can do. So what I've done is I used my lovely assistant Astro as the stand-in model for today. So these two shots that I'm about to show you are from the same position, from the same camera. I was using the SLR 680. I didn't move the tripod at all. Uh, one is without the lens and one of them is with the lens. So Astro is four feet from the wall and four and a half feet from the camera for the first shot with no lens. And the second shot is with the same position, same everything, but with the lens. But notice the background in each one of them. There's a slight difference. One of them has a little bit more separation. One of them has a little bit more background blur or that bokeh, blurry effect, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and that is because of the lens. Now let's back up a little bit. You're probably thinking to yourself, what's this all mean? Uh, what are you talking about versus outside and inside? What are you talking about? Well, I was using the SLR 680 and it has a range of f-stops. I couldn't remember the, the range, so I uh, went to Facebook and a Facebook group that I made, and I'll leave a link down below if you guys wanna check it out, and ask the lovely people over there uh, some questions, because I could not find the range of the f-stop from the SLR 680 anywhere, and so they were super helpful, and they told me. It is an f8, which I did know that, uh, but I didn't know it went all the way to 96, so that's pretty crazy. So on a super bright, sunny day, the automatic sensor in these cameras it's going to close that aperture down and so that eliminates a lot of the background blur the effect that you're trying to get when you're doing a portrait shot so doing those outside was not the right idea so in studio or in a lower light situation it's going to be opened up pretty far so it's going to get closer to that f8 range so adding in the lens with the wider aperture is going to give more blur you're going to get a nice looking portrait shot so the pros and cons to this lens there's a couple of things you need to know so typically when you shoot with a Polaroid camera, you can get as close as 10 inches to the camera. It's pretty close. So you can get some nice little close-up shots. Now, if you add the lens, the closest you can get is two feet. Yeah. But again, it's a zoom lens, so you don't necessarily need to get that close. Uh, but it's worth noting, this shot here was taken at its maximum or minimum, depending on how you look at it, I guess, closeness to the camera. It's still a really great shot. Another thing you have to take into account, and I had mentioned it earlier in the video, is you cannot use autofocus with this lens. So if you're using a sonar camera, this still clicks on. It works on any folding camera, as so you can just put it on. So you can still get your finger in here and manually focus the lens. Another neat touch with this is it's glass, it's not plastic. So if you're putting it on your glass SLR camera, it's going to be super, super sharp. So to put it on, I guess I haven't really talked about that. It, it is plastic framed, so you kind of have to be careful. But I've been using it and traveling with it and it seems pretty durable. Uh, but it has these two little tabs that you squeeze and you squeeze it onto the camera by pressing down and then you just release them and it just clicks into place. Same thing, you take it off. Now what I wish would happen is if there was more lens options and there's a company out there, come on, moment. I'm calling you guys out right now. There is a way you could make lenses for vintage Polaroid cameras. I mean, you guys are even starting to sell Polaroid cameras on your website. You guys could totally make this with the current lenses that you guys have. And just make a bracket. All you have to do is get one of these, repurpose the design a little bit and just have a removable lenses or even just keep you know putting these out individually. I don't know. I think Moment, if you guys are out there listening and watching this, you can make some awesome cool lenses for vintage cameras. I think it'd be really neat. I'd love to see a super wide lens. That'd be really cool. And maybe even a stronger or farther telephoto lens would be really cool too. But also not even just those, maybe just filters that you guys could stick on or even just effects lenses. I don't know, I'm going to digress. Maybe that's a separate video in the future. I'll get into it. But Moment, if you're watching, get on it. 
give me a call. I'm actually fairly close to you. Uh, you're in Seattle. I'm down in Vancouver, Washington. I can drive up. Let's talk. Oh, side note. I just thought of this. If you flip this over, you know, it's a super wide angle. And if you hold it in front of the lens, that might work. I might have to test that out later. Check in later for a future video on fun hacks. I think that might be one of them. But anyway, since this is a glass lens, you're still gonna get some super crispy, sharp images as if you would have just taken it without the, this lens as well. It's really, really great. I highly recommend trying to track one down. They can be a little tricky to find. I know I looked recently and there was one available uh, for 50 bucks. However, uh, I had some issues. There was like fogging in the lens. That's one thing you wanna make sure it doesn't have. Yeah, I really like, wait, what am I, no. That's better. But yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you guys found this helpful at all, please consider subscribing and leaving a comment below. Let's chat. And if you guys have something else you have found that's really cool for your Polaroid cameras, well, let me know too. I would love to find out because, you know, I kind of like Polaroid cameras. I know a lot of my like, videos in the last couple months have just kind of been straight Polaroid or just instant photography related, which I've just been diving really deep into it and loving it a lot. But guys, thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. Now get out there, make some art.